Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Kevin Ferry, co-founder at Cronus Futures Management. He created the company in 2005 with some other traders, focusing on fixed income, foreign exchange, and equity futures trading. Kevin, how are you doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. So, I, I was on the floor a long time ago, and you were, you were on the floor at the Merck, correct? Yes, sir. And I was uh, I am a member from '88 to 2005. Okay, it w was your badge. What was it? CRO or what was it? No, uh, KTF. Okay, we you went your initials. Uh, we all went with our acronym. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was uh, back a long time ago. I was in the S and P futures pit from. Uh, 85 and until 92 so i got out there a little bit earlier but uh things have really changed since then huh yeah i think uh you know like the one of the things that uh we do and uh joe uh at trading points uh on uh, twitter my partner joe is uh we create a model that allows you to interact with the market in a different way than what we grew up with and uh I think that uh, that's really the tip that I would give your listeners or your viewers is that uh, you know that they should work on creating a discipline that allows them to uh, interact with the market in a way that they're comfortable, rather than get caught up in uh, arguments about HFT or high technology. <laughs> uh, to do do what works for you. So, are your uh, you know are your models based on, on technicals? I mean, you use I mean you trade in a lot of different things here. Fundamental analysis. Uh, do you uh, intertwine the two, or what are your models based on? Yeah, well, I never learned that uh, technical analysis stuff. So Joe handles all that for me. And uh, from an overlay standpoint, uh, we track uh, over fifty futures and currencies and over 300 stocks and ETFs. Uh, and so it's a mathematical model that basically uh, produces what we call a risk window uh, in which you should interact with the marketplace. So, uh, you know, what I would say is, you know, my experience was don't believe the hype, don't get caught up in what's the emotion or what's being uh, promulgated as a big story. And so the, uh, the, the concentration of what the model does is, is tell us when we should interact with the market uh, from a risk standpoint. We try and define the, define the risk of being in the market or define the risk of, uh, of uh, having a position. That, that's where we spend all of our time. So you don't mess with the models. They're, 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 they're consistent. You get the signals. You put them in. You're obviously going in with a defined risk-reward ratio and uh, kind of Try right. try and take the emotion out of trading. Exactly, and uh, by overlaying uh, voodoo, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I can't worship at a different church. So I never <laughs> learned technical analysis. I, it's not my background. So I was, uh, you know, I I let Joe, my partner, handle that. He understands it. Uh -huh. He's exceptional at it. But you don't, I guess, again, from an advice standpoint, what I would say is don't try and be a jack of all trades. Know what your strengths are and, and uh, don't be afraid to utilize uh, other people uh, or institutions that to provide uh, uh, value in a different way. So what are your time frames on, on these trades? I mean, obviously, uh, <laughs> you know, as it depends, I guess the longer you're in, the better if you're doing a longer term perspective, because if you're in for a short time, it means you're probably getting hit on the stops. But, you know, what, what are your time frames? Right. Well, our, our frames are longer than people would think. And most trades for us are, are closer to three days or even uh, uh, weeks. Uh, uh, unlike people who want a lot of interaction with the market or a lot of signals, the less signals we get, the better they are. So, uh, I, I, my advice is be a low frequency trader, you know, and so and let your trades play out. Uh, that that's uh, what we try to do, uh, um, and we don't get them all. I mean, if you're you know from the equity space, 300 stocks uh, and ETFs yesterday, 38 hit upside objectives for us. 
one that was Aetna hit the downside objective and one hit the up and the down in a big reversal. And as you might guess, that was Hewlett Packard. Right. So, uh, you're, so you're playing stocks from the long side and the short side? Sure. I mean, we're completely agnostic uh, with regard to the model tells us the direction. Uh, as, a, as a fundamental macro guy, my opinion is irrelevant. I mean, I know what I know. I need <laughs> some model that tells me when to know it. And so uh, that's uh, uh, what we use it for. I mean, uh, my, uh, the one thing you need to, you know, to really humble yourself if you're going to play, you're up against the biggest and smartest and fastest institutions in the world as an individual trader. So, you know, uh, you know, my advice is get comfortable in your own skin and fight the fights that you think you can win. But, you know, you got to know when to run is, when, is, is, is my advice. Okay. Uh, you currently uh, in the S&P futures at all for your clients? Yeah, we've been very constructive uh, from a macro standpoint. So our bias is to be long the S and P, and to begin with, in the present pattern, um, I would say on the, the shorter term, or what we would call a daily basis, if you know it for, for all the hype, the S and P hasn't really gone anywhere, and uh, the corrections from new highs have been much deeper than the and, and aggressive than the progress of you know the risk weighted to to hold them. In Correct. other words, you can make a, make a few handles to make a new high, but then you're going to be up against the 7,000-point drop like uh, last month to, to come back at it. So, But on a weekly basis, and we do do a small amount of really long-term stuff uh, based on the weeklies, the S&P has been uh, a strong ride. And so if you put a number on it, I would call the point of control 1867 on the future, and uh, meeting the market's okay as long as it's above there. And uh, the role is significant. Uh, um, we don't advise people to get too aggressively short when the contracts are rolling because you're picking up, a, because of the zero interest rate environment, you're picking up a positive role. And uh, uh, that's, that's a huge incentive to keep the market together until September becomes the new contract. Explain the role there for our listeners. Well, in normal times, the role should be positive. You should have to pay the, the risk-free rate plus the dividend, so the future contract for the S&P should trade five to seven points above the prevailing, which from a rolling short position or what we would call a hedged position is great because you're always covering and replacing it with a higher number. But in the zero interest rate environment, when the risk-free rate goes to zero, the the role goes uh, what we call positive. Or so, so the future, the future trades five to seven under the, the prevailing. And if you told me that you could borrow the productive capacity of the United States for three months for five points or six points in the S and P for free, then I'm going to take that back most of the time. And so uh, 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 that's it's just a structural way that things are. That, that the contract is built, it's not going to change until the term structure changes and the risk-free rate changes. And that's not on the horizon right now. Okay, what about what the gold market? Uh, we've been talking about it quite a bit. Uh, really been in an extremely long consolidation pattern here, bouncing, holding 1290, breaking below it a few times, coming back above it. Can't get a close over 1300. Uh, and what's your take on the gold market? Um, uh, I've never traded it. Really? To be honest with you, I just have no. I, yeah, I'm from a technical standpoint. Joe would tell me that it's good because it tends to trend. People definitely glom on. I just have no use for it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you can proxy most big ideas that people have about gold or what gold is supposed to represent in other markets, whether they're fixed income or currency or. Or the or equity, and so uh, I I just I just don't have any use for it, and and have never I'm not being a wise guy here. I've never traded it in my life. Okay, all right. So with the market up here at new all-time highs, you just 
uh, you know, nothing's really pushing us through that magic number at 1898.50. Uh, the pullbacks have been bought here in the 1860 handle, even uh, even this week. Is uh, is there anything that uh, can disrupt this gravy train from a macro standpoint? Uh, well, certainly. I think that the, the first thing I would say is that you that uh, free money and central bank induced low volatility makes geniuses out of just about everybody. <laughs> so the, uh, that's the easy part. But uh, the term structure of credit is going to have to adjust. Uh, the Fed is concerned about how that adjustment process will take place in the future. And uh, they're going to do everything they can to promulgate under the stability mandate this environment as long as they can. But, you know, things happen. The markets break out. And so I'd say that, uh, you know, the, the, the ending of the low volatility period is what you watch out for. And it's going to come. The first signs to crack it are going, you know, look, watch the belly of the, of the Treasury curve. Uh, I mean, that's where things will start to get away from them. Okay, you mentioned uh, Hewlett Packard uh, earlier in the discussion. That he said that, that uh-huh. uh, did uh, were you into that? I uh, had some wild activity yesterday. Uh, the news broke it, slammed it down hard. Seems to be recovering today. Did you have a position that you got stopped out of, or were you trying to initiate something? Yeah, I went from long to short in the same session. I mean, the, the, what, what, fortunately, our models when when. If the market's still trading and objectives are met, if you don't get out, at least the model it moves up for your protection. But uh-huh. uh, yeah, you have to when you're going to hit upside and downside. Those are major, uh, what we call black diamond patterns. It also means that future trading, you know, the next trades or future pattern in in Hewlett Packard is one to be avoided because you know it doesn't. It tells us that the you know that's not the kind of price action that uh, we feel is. Uh, is worth focusing on after you have a move like that. So, you know, just put your trade anything but you with that now would be, <laughs> okay. would be my advice. Yeah, just looking at it uh, all over the map at pre-market trading did get dip under 32, got a nice rally up to 32.99. I'm still focusing on this whole 36, 36, 33, 36 area. That was a high from yesterday. We also had multiple tops at 33.34, 33.28, 27. So if you get through the 33 dollar level, see what happens there. So um, any tips for people, new traders, you know, getting into the market? I know you gave a lot lot for uh you know earlier in the interview but uh you know just word of advice for people that, that you know want to get active in the in the futures markets uh what advice could you give them well first and foremost learn as much as you can with other people's money before or before you go out there and start playing with the big boys i mean uh but from a di- from a discipline standpoint to build a build a robust discipline you know, what I call your house of worship, and worship there. Don't jump around. I mean, don't, you know, keep learning, but, you know, you can't you can't keep changing your colors either. So uh, spend your time on the, the, that. And, and my number one advice to everyone who has ever come up behind me is don't believe the hype. Uh, 90% of the time in the market, there's way less going on than people would, or, or the price action would like you to believe and so uh, uh, you have to really center yourself and and uh, keep your emotions in check and uh, and uh, you know focus on what's important which is the price you know there's only two variables price and time if you get too caught up in the time you'll lose track you know lose focus of what's important and that's price and so uh, you know I, that would be my advice and be a low frequency trader as opposed to high frequency price don't lie well kevin thanks a lot for coming on we've had kevin ferry co-founder of cronus futures management uh handling uh people's money in fixed income foreign exchange and equity futures trying to navigate this electronic world kevin thanks a lot for coming on have a good trade thanks a lot have a good weekend okay thank you